morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about DNA. Topic for the day is mutations. I promise you this is going to be short. I've got two objectives for you. They are very quick. Here's what they are. First one, by the end of the video, understand the concept of a mutagen. We'll do that in one slide. Next one, compare and contrast the various types of DNA mutation. There are about three of them. Simple, easy. So here we go. As far as a mutation goes, what is a mutation? Now, in a previous video, we talked about chromosome mutations. That is where you are taking chunks out of chromosomes. You are losing whole genes. You are flipping genes upside down. You are sticking them onto other chromosomes. For the case of today's discussion, a mutation is any change in the sequence of DNA bases. So let's say you're going down a string of DNA and there's an A. Instead, you put a B there, not a B, you don't have B in DNA. Cruising along, you got an A, you put a T in there instead, that is a mutation. I got the funny movie poster on the side there because people generally think that, hey, mutations cause big, terrible things. Now, the funny thing is, most mutations don't cause any damage to the organism. Um, the ones that do cause some sort of change in the organism are generally detrimental, but on occasion, you do get a rare, unique combination that confers some sort of benefit on that organism. So just know for the purpose of our discussion today, a mutation is any change in DNA base sequence. As far as ways that can happen, any factor or chemical or cause that changes DNA is called a mutagen. So some common mutagens you know of, UV radiation causes skin cancer, that causes the DNA in your skin cells to break down, so that would be a mutagen. Um, you could talk about benzene. Benzene is a carcinogen that leads to cancer. It's also a mutagen because it can damage DNA. So anything that is acting on the DNA in a way that is detrimental and is from outside the body is known as a mutagen. As far as actual effects, here we go. So first type of mutation we're going to talk about is a point mutation. And a point mutation is just simply a one base change. So right here you can see that our DNA code is CTT. The matching codon is GAA. So right here we got DNA. You can see right here we've got mRNA. So the DNA says CTT matching mRNA says GAA. Now if there is a mutation, let's say a mutagen has acted on this DNA, the DNA strand now has CAT, spelling cat, and the resulting mRNA has GUA. Now we have only changed one base. We have changed this base right there. Is it a big deal if we change just one little base? I mean, there are trillions of them in your body, so is one a big deal? It can be. If you remember, the body reads, not the body, uh, ribosomes read mRNA in three base chunks called codons. Each of those codons is the label for a specific amino acid to be put into a chain of protein. You change one base and you can get a completely different codon. So right here is an example for uh, sickle cell anemia. Normally you get this codon causing glutamine to be put into the chain of amino acids. In sickle cell anemia, this base gets changed out and you end up with valine. And that one little change in that one little amino acid can completely wreck the hemoglobin molecule. Now, there are three types of point mutations to kind of be aware of, and I've labeled them silent, missense, and nonsense, and here's what I mean by those. So, a silent mutation is a mutation that does not have any effect on the phenotype of the cell. Here's how this is possible. If you look at this chart over here, each of these blocks represents an amino acid. Most amino acids have three or four different codons that will give you the same amino acid. So let's say that you are trying to get serine put into the polypeptide chain. You could have the original codon should be UCU, but let's say there's a mutation that causes it to U, changes it to UCC. Functionally speaking, not a big deal because either way you are going to get serine. So that would be a silent mutation in that it's not going to show up anywhere. A missense mutation is one that changes a single base, or not a single base, um, a single amino acid. So back on the last slide, I talked about sickle cell anemia, changing glutamine to valine. That is a missense mutation. A nonsense mutation is a big deal because a nonsense mutation causes, rather than a regular codon to be put in place, a stop codon 
is created. So let's say the one letter that got changed turned a regular codon that would have coded for, I don't know, valine or aspartame or something like that, changed it into a codon that says stop. In that case, transcription and translation will stop right there. So let's say you only get like four or five amino acids put in place and then the mutation causes a stop codon to put in there you're done. You're not going to make a working protein because the process is going to stop artificially. So that would be a nonsense mutation. And I think this is actually where we finish for the day. Um, there are other mutations known as insertions and deletions. Insertions and deletions are generally a bigger deal and a bigger problem than a point mutation. These fall into a category called frame shift mutations because they shift the whole reading frame for the ribosome. Here's what I mean by that. If you remember when our ribosome is reading mRNA to build a protein, it is cruising along one codon at a time. So three bases, one codon. Each codon is the instructions for one amino acid. So it's really important that our ribosome is sitting on top of the right codons at any point in time. If you have got, let's say, an insertion, in an insertion, an extra base is going to be put in, which is going to change the way that your ribosome reads the whole string. So it could be, let's say that originally your base sequence was something like this. The ribosome would have read, here's one codon, here's a second codon. If you had an insertion, you might have A, A, T, and we'll put an extra T in there. The ribosome now gets messed up because it reads this one, all right, sweet, we're good. But this time it reads TGG instead of triple G. So everything beyond this mutation right here is going to be completely wrong because the ribosome is reading the wrong codon. It's all screwed up. Same thing for a deletion. If you were to have the same set of six and then let's say knock out this G, first codon's fine, but the next one, it would read this and then whatever letter might be over there. So they're called frame shift mutations because they are shifting the frame that the ribosome is reading. And these are generally very detrimental because one insertion or deletion is going to screw up every codon downstream from it. So out of today, just recognize point mutation, you are changing a single base and those fall into the categories of silence, silent, missense, and nonsense. And then you got frame shift deletions where you're adding a base or taking away a base and changing the whole reading frame for the production of that protein. Hopefully that was quick enough. Hopefully you followed it. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. Hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.